Welcome back to the greenhouse. Just shed the sweatshirt. It is mighty warm in here. We're sitting 75 or something, maybe 80 degrees in here. On a 30 degree day, it was about 22 degrees overnight. Not much difference there, but the sun makes all the difference. We're getting all of these seed trays and all of our cuttings. We've got lots and lots of stuff to cover today. I'm going to build some tables. We're going to have a very simple setup. We're going to be using that blue PEX tubing that has our compost heated water to help sprout and we need more room. So we're not gonna fill any more seed trays until we have tables set up and a place to put all this stuff. If that sounds interesting, we're gonna do all of that and then bring everybody along for the beginning of our farmer's market, the beginning of spring here, thinking spring even though it's not really here yet. So here we are starting all of our cold weather propagating. We've got all of these living plants that are coming out of dormancy very early and new cuttings. We've got all types of fresh cutting. This is one of the best times. It's about mid-winter to late winter and we're able to take those cuttings right before they start to break dormancy naturally in spring. So aside from keeping these cuttings alive in this little bed and just basically healing them in and protecting them in the greenhouse, we've got a lot of seeds we've started. We've got our cold weather crops. We've got kales, shards, several different kinds of each. We've got heading collards, we've got onions, we're starting garlic all types of stuff. That's what we're doing here is getting prepared for this spring and this spring's market. So let's take a look at everything we got going on. So starting at the beginning of our DIY tables here, we've got all of these elderberries and we've got probably 20 or 30 of them that are actually already throwing leaves off from being inside the greenhouse. Uh, lots of onions, we got some garlic we dug up, more onions, parsleys, Lots and lots of cuttings that we have some grapes and stuff all types of cool stuff That we were able to pull right out of the bed that these tables went over top of now We've got all these crops to work with we can divide we can pot these up elderberries are very lucrative at the market They are a great seller. They're a good medicine. We've got this little bubbler So we'll fill this up with some water let it bubble for a day or two as we work through these This is another tray. We've been working on a bunch of green sorrel some onions that we found, a bunch of kales and hyssops and stuff like that. Just lots of little random crops. We started all these little cuttings from our fig trees here. We've got another fig tree breaking dormancy from last spring. Lots of elderberry cuttings here and they got some light. The elderberries are just super abundant this season. They're all starting to throw good roots. Even this one right here barely has any roots to it. See the roots on this grape here? Very cool to be able to have all of those from last season. We didn't lose them, none of them died. They all just kind of mulled over and were healed in. Lots of fresh cuttings here and you can see these are some red raspberries here. Zoom in a little bit. We've got a lot of gnaw marks on there from bunny rabbits and stuff. Having lots of deer and pest protection from those in the winter time is very important because they have scarce resources and they will eat all of your food forest items here. So moving over you see all these mason jar lids. Now I just use those to protect while I'm stacking them and carrying them around so I don't crush the seeds. If we have them sprouting up already, it allows maybe a half inch to an inch gap for the seeds to actually be able to come out of the soil. And then we don't crush all of the fresh plants here. So we're able to stack them if we've got to move them. Now I can remove all them because we have plenty of room in here. We're gonna end up taking this down, all of this cold frame here. The kale is actually going pretty well in there. You can see some onions growing, all types of stuff. We just haven't really harvested a whole lot from in here. This little cold frame was a very neat experiment for the winter time. We've got lots of crops in here still just running strong throughout the entire winter here. 
And now that we are starting to think spring, we've got to move all this down. We're gonna have tables, more tables for more plants here. We've got all of this stuff to get situated, but we've got our PEX tubing here. So this PEX tubing is going to run up underneath all of the tables, and then we are going to take sandbags or bricks or rocks, and we're going to run all of this PEX underneath the tables and then we will pin them up with bricks and then we will have a little bit of radiant heat down here basically right underneath all of these sprouting plants here so we will have a little bit of extra warmth from our compost heating because we don't have any type of shell or poly to put over this side so we begin spraying in these three different ways and i wanted to just cover how we're transitioning from winter to spring here slowly it's still very early in the season so we're taking our cuttings and we're planting seeds the two main things and we're pulling up and dividing we've got all of these egyptian onions over here and they have really been productive this winter they tripled in size and they are very easily dividable so all of these started as maybe one or two plants now we've got maybe 12 so we've got a dozen plants when we pull them up we'll just take the tops I mean that was pretty rude and crude the plants really don't mind you can cut them nice and neat with a pair of scissors or your snips but it's still gonna do the same thing all of these are going to go in a little bit of water or get potted up right away they're gonna regenerate even faster since they were trimmed and we should have good success and throw off good roots as they're going to be damaged and they're going to need to repair themselves so we're kind of jump-starting that process by doing it. here we are a week later coming on out checking on everything Everything sat, we had a little bit of overcast. Everything sat in here, no roots exposed to the sun. Everything's still alive. You can see some of these sprouts are drying out because we didn't want to water them too heavily, but we have sprouts. Everything's starting to sprout up. Quite interesting to see so quickly. You can see little tiny onions starting to sprout up in here. We just like to mass sow our onions so we can prick them apart very easily. So with a combination of our compost heating underneath this radiating heat up and the warmer temperatures, the abnormal warm temperature we have today of almost 59 degrees or something, almost 60 degrees, just a fluke hot day. So we're able to open both doors on the greenhouse. We got the baby dog out here running around. So we're having great success very early on into the season. All of these hitting collards have sprouted up very nice for us. As I showed, everything sprouting up, our little onions and stuff. And we've got hundreds more flats to get going here. So this is a very successful way to start all these and these cuttings we showed at the beginning of the video baby dog we've got these elderberry cuttings that are already starting to throw off vegetation just from being cut and placed in water so everything's really rocking to life on us and we're able to do all of that with the greenhouse with the warm temperatures and with the added benefits of compost heating at the nighttime we're able to put all of these temps in and then it just radiates up it might not last all night but it's enough to get all of these plants without covering them to sprout up so I wanted to come out the week after and just show everybody what everything was looking like at this little table before I did a whole lot more work here just wanted to give an overview of all of these coming up how easy it really is even with single digit temperatures we saw uh, 9 or 10 degrees the other night out here without covering these we were able to keep warm enough temperatures you can see just how warm it's been getting we've got flowers coming up on our pak choy over there everything looks wonderful in here lots and lots of crops we're turning over beds here our pak choy was a very cold weather crop that didn't want to get warm so it's already flowering on us we've got to replace that lots and lots to do out here we got our water heating over here still she's trying to drink it we got extra warm water getting dumped into this tank I don't have my thermometer down here but even with this laying flat we're dismantling this system to set up other things here aquaponics and such we are going to be doing away with the heating of the greenhouse because we are having a very early spring here so everything all works together to be able to heat and store heat and be able to keep the greenhouse warm enough overnight. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. If you got any questions, definitely drop it in the comments below. We've already got pretty decent success rate here. Most of the crops are popping up for us within about a week here.